Bye, everyone. This week on Healthy Living, we will have a look at the challenges of drug addiction. We will see how a new synthetic drug put users in downtown Sao Paulo, Brazil, in a zombie state. And how the anti-drug agency in Nigeria has organized a street walk to sensitize youth on the dangers of drugs. Finally, we will examine this question. Could artificial intelligence help solve the U.S. fentanyl crisis? These stories and more are in this edition of Healthy Living. Hello and welcome to Healthy Living. I'm Nanit Talani. The tip easy and fast production of synthetic drugs has radically transformed illicit drug markets around the world with lethal result the United Nations warns. Globally, more than 296 million people used the drugs in 2021, amounting to an increase of 23% over the previous decade. In Sao Paulo, Brazil, a new synthetic drug is puzzling authorities. It's called K9. It's very cheap and highly addictive. It is widely available throughout the central region of Sao Paulo. Edgar Maciel reports. It's late afternoon in downtown Sao Paulo. On the floor, you can find what's left of the new drug that is haunting the biggest city in South America. These are vials of K9 a synthetic drug made by drug dealers in a laboratory. On the streets, users are caught in a zombie state. Looking from outside, it looks like their brain froze and left the body paralyzed. This year alone, 102 people were treated for suspected cases of intoxication by synthetic cannabidio in Sao Paulo. There are still no published scientific studies detailing the consequences of its long-term use. We visit this laboratory in a university in Sao Paulo to understand the addictive power of this substance. It is called synthetic cannabidio because it activates the same brain regions as THC, the main component of marijuana. This group of synthetic substances is among the disturbing drugs. The hallucinogenic effect is very fast. It has a mixture of stimulants and depressants that brings up this disruption that people have. And it gives these effects of the person not being able to speak, many times looking like a zombie, eyes still. According to the police, this drug was first detected in prisons, mostly dominated by a criminal organization that operates from within the Sao Paulo state penitentiary system called Primero Comando da Capital, PCC. Now, K9 has spread to the streets because it's very cheap, which makes it accessible even to the homeless. Weekly police raids lead to arrests of traffickers and discovery of new laboratories where K9 is manufactured. Due to the emergence of the drugs, we started to target the labs and not just the big drug dealers in Sao Paulo. It doesn't have a defined formula. There are a lot of people doing it and each one mixes with a certain amount, one more ingredient. K9 spread through Krakolandia, a region in downtown Sao Paulo completely dominated by drug users and sellers. Groups of addicts mill around the area looking to buy drugs. This has brought fear to downtown residents who have been dealing with insecurity, including robberies. Removing users from the center is transferring the problem to other parts of the city, according to security specialist Guarasi Mirad. There is no magic formula, and it needs to be worked on for a long time. Every time you do an operation, you spread it, spread where the user is, where the supplier is. You need to work hard to reduce it. How are you going to do this? There are no people for that. Working like this is drying ice. Meanwhile, users agonize. In Egreja da Se, the biggest Catholic church and one of the city's monuments, 
While people pray inside, this man begs for water, but he can't even move his body from the floor. Sao Paulo continues its war against drugs, but analysts say this could be a losing battle. To commemorate the International Day Against Drug Abuse on June 26th, the anti-drug agency in Nigeria has organized a street walk in Jos, Nigeria, to sensitize youth on the dangers of drugs. Anti-drugs officials and participants shared their thoughts on drug addiction in the community and what they think can be done to help those who are struggling with addiction. Every year, the United Nations has set aside June 26th of every year to commemorate and sensitize, indeed, the international community on the dangers being posed by drug abuse and illicit trafficking. Today's date is set aside to sensitize and enlighten people to understand the grave dangers inherent in the abuse of drugs. All drugs are notorious. They all have the capability of foiling insecurity. They have the capability of inciting violence and all kinds of insurgency, kidnapping, and all forms of social vices we are witnessing today. In Plateau State here, from January to, to date, in this month of June, we have succeeded in seizing over 605 kilograms of various illicit drugs and almost over 600 suspects. They need help. So we, we need institutionalized help. We need personal help. We need uh, health, uh, community help in terms of where the community plays a role through its socialization structures, masjid, churches, elders. And then we need our health system to vastly improve in terms of what's available uh, in terms of health care. The religious bodies, whether, what, whichever faith we're talking about, must know that it's their responsibility to step in and help uh, deal with this matter spiritually, uh, morally from the religious perspective and then as a family we must also be ready to give support part of the unemployed congolese youth consumes a cheap and artisanal drug called bambe it is made from the residue of the exhaust pipe vehicles modest kabangala pharmacist in the drc explains the reason and risk of consuming this drug. Uh, drug artisanal. This is a homemade drug that is very potent, used by young people who, according to the information we have, use the substance extracted from the exhaust pipes of vehicles as a catalyst, uh, to which they then add tablets of acid, prostadine, or tramadol, a fine powder crushed to inhale, which gives them an instant effect. This bomb drug used by these young people just to have fun, sometimes to escape the pain or the harshness of their precarious social life, is a public health problem that worries the authorities. The consequences are severe for the society. We deplore the acts of urban banditry perpetrated by these young people. Once they have taken this drug, they take up machetes and engage in fights, doing all sorts of things with no feelings or pity. It is of great concern to the community, as they cause public disturbance and disrupt the peace. To fight effectively against the phenomenon, we need collaboration between the health authorities and the police. But above all, it is critical to limit these distribution channels of the substance. We have seen a decrease. The authorities have made a lot of effort. The police have made a lot of effort to be able to track down these young people. And therefore, this phenomenon has significantly decreased. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security is exploring ways artificial intelligence can help detect fentanyl and prevent it from entering the country. VOS Julie Tabo has more. The U.S.-Mexican border is an important gateway for the flow of people and commerce, but it's also increasingly vulnerable to the surge of illegal smuggling of dangerous drugs like fentanyl. To address this growing concern, 
Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas in April announced the creation of a new task force. Drug trafficking organizations have grown in sophistication and power. Among other things, it would look at ways artificial intelligence can be used to detect and counter the flow of illegal drugs into the country. We will explore using this technology to better detect fentanyl shipments, identify and interdict the flow of precursor chemicals around the world, and target for disruption key nodes in the criminal networks. Pat Simmons, a former director at U.S. Customs and Border Protection, says there are systems on the market today which could be further enhanced with AI. One example is something called the muon tomography system, which can produce a more accurate image of the object that's being scanned compared to the X-ray technology currently being used. If there's dense cargo in there, X-ray can't penetrate it. So if you use a muon tomography system, it can penetrate and does and allows the officers to see exactly what's inside of a dense object. Simmons says the system can also help the task force use AI to identify the precursor chemicals that go into the creation of fentanyl. You'd have to teach the AI what it is you're looking for. So you would get some of these precursor chemicals that are uh, coming in from China by the boatload, um, and you would teach this system through thousands of scans. So it would begin to realize what it's looking for. Yeah, nice. Another way AI can help is an in intelligence and predictive analytics with vehicle crossings at the border. Who are the people that are coming across? How often do they come across? And then also the vehicle and the license registration. How often are they coming across? AI can be deployed to detect fentanyl that has been pressed to look like candy or legitimately manufactured prescription pills. The AI task force is due to report their findings to Homeland Security in the coming months. Palorinia refugee settlement in Uganda is reporting high numbers of suicide and suicide attempts by the people who live there. Organizations and individuals who work with the refugees say denial of food and a failure to meet basic needs are the main causes. Alima Atumani reports from Obangi district, Uganda. Since the start of this year, the Lutheran World Federation, a non-profit working with refugees in the Palurinia settlement in Uganda's Obongi district, has recorded one suicide and 20 attempts by refugees. 18-year-old James Wubam came to Palurinia with his uncle. He says his uncle's wife would deliberately deny him food. He also said he found it difficult to ask his uncle for basic needs, including school requirements. He doesn't have any siblings to share these issues with, and this has put him in a deep depression. I thought of hanging myself. I went to a local club with my friends and consumed some alcohol. When I got home, I contemplated suicide. Isaac Koturi, a clinical psychologist with the Lutheran World Federation, says most of the 20 suicide attempts so far this year involved young people triggered by unmet needs. In a settlement here, people are, their hands are tight. You, you survive only on the given items. Now you can't make it for yourself. Now to make it worse is that even those who are in position to work, there is very few or less or minimal uh, livelihood opportunities that would, would help them to, to earn a better living. Michael Gale said that when he found out that his name was listed under those whose families would not get food, his wife left him. Left to fend for four children, he contemplated a quick escape. They will call you Baba when they want to eat, but there is no food, there is nothing. I cannot go find labor work from people. I sit in one place. It is too much, and it is better for me to hang myself. To ensure each case is attended to in time, agencies have set up para counselors, also known as suicide gatekeepers. With little funding and just one clinical psychologist in the settlement, many victims do not get the support they need. Halima Athmani for VA News, Obongi District, Uganda. That's our show for today. For more health news, wellness tips, and medical breakthroughs, stay connected to Voice of America at voaafrica.com. 
Until next time, stay well and strive to make every day a healthy day. <laughs>